Hello, welcome to a new Creature tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover the very new exciting feature in Creature that just got added which allows you to add 3D objects, so a 3D mesh and animate it like a 2D character. So Creature will actually automatically convert a 3D mesh into a 2D animated character and as an added bonus it will also save out the normal maps convert them in a special way so that you can light your 3D or rather 2D animated character in a 3D fashion. So that's really exciting. I think you all agree on that. And as you know, I'm trying to make Creature the most advanced 2D animation tool out there. So this is one of the goals and every feature we add gets to that goal a lot closer. Okay, so before we continue to see how this feature actually works, let's let me explain to you why we need 3D to 2D. I know some of you already think it's self-explanatory, but let's, let's go through some of the reasons. So the first reason, of course, is that 2D assets, every, every, everybody knows, are a lot cheaper, lighter, and faster versus a full-on 3D asset. This makes a total sense, right? So if you're going to throw this character into a game with lots of polygons, your 2D character assets are going to be a lot cheaper because they, they, they you, know, you, you take away one dimension and Typically, especially with Creature, you can actually downres the mesh. So essentially, you can have a very high resolution 3D mesh. It doesn't matter how high resolution you want it to be, but when you convert it over to Creature, we can remesh it in a 2D way. So you can have a high resolution 3D character animated with a low resolution 2D mesh. So you get the benefits, the best you know benefits of both worlds. It looks great, and it's also very fast to execute in your game engine. So that's a huge advantage, which means it's actually perfect for background or crowds elements. In, in, in places in the game, say even if you have a 3D game, if you have background characters that where the, you know, where the camera angle doesn't change too much, you can actually put in these fake 3D or pseudo 3D or rather 2D assets in the background or in large crowds to animate at a very low cost. So that's a huge advantage and it's still mixes with your 3D scene. You can still light them in 3D and all that, so it works seamlessly. And also, even if you're not doing 3D, if you're doing more 2D character animation, these things are extremely useful to, for 2.5D animation effects, right? So you can add on a whole bunch of different mesh deformation motors or whatnot to make a full-on 2.5D animation effect, so it gives a very unique look. Again, another very compelling reason why you want to go from 3D to 2D. And finally, this is also the case as well. It's a lot easier to animate, animate in 2D than in 3D. And in many cases, that's probably all you need. So again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do 3D animation. I'm just saying that Creature gives you an additional option to what you already have. If your character needs the full 3D animation pipeline or framework, go ahead and just do 3D. I mean, that's what you need to do. But in some cases where you don't need full-on 3D, but you need the 3D look, and you can get away with some of, some of the limitations of a 2D animation pipeline, then this feature will be a big plus, a big compelling reason why you want to use it. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so when you load up Creature, the way to create a 2D animated character from 3D is actually really simple. You click on Create Project, and now you can see there is a third option here called Create from 3D Mesh. It says Create a 2D animated character from a 3D OBJ mesh. So this has to be a, a wavefront OBJ mesh, which you can create very easily from all sorts of 3D tools, Maya, Blender, Houdini, 3ds Max, etc. Make sure you export it as an OBJ mesh. And the requirement, though, is that you have to merge all your objects into one single object. So right now, currently at least, we will extend this in the future, but everything has to be merged into one single mesh object in order for that to work. So select that and click OK. So welcome to the 3D to Creature or 3D to 2D screen. And as you can see, it says mesh not loaded. So we have to get started. So I'm going to load a mesh. So move your mouse over to import.obj mesh, click on it. And I am going to let's let's try a couple things. So let's import let's say an OBJ here. And once you've imported that, it says no texture map loaded. So you have to give it a texture map. So you also need so the requirements again for your character are merge everything into one single mesh object and also 
make sure you have UVs on it, so you have actually mapped UV coordinates onto the character that's important, and normals, and also it has to have a texture map, right? So we can select that, and let's try to find the texture. There you go, that's the texture of it. So double click, and there you go. <laughs> that's our dinosaur character. Now to rotate, just hold Control and drag, and you can see I can rotate this character around very easily, right? Uh, I can scroll out by you know, scrolling the mouse wheel, and then if I right drag, I believe, that, there you go, I can pan around. So very easy. Okay, so this is the character with the default texture map. There's an optional normal map. If you have a normal map, if you don't have it, it's fine, but if you do have a normal map, you can also put it on the character. So let's click on that and select the normal map. And there you go, pretty cool. So now you have normal mapping on your character. Now, take note, this is just the preview. Um, when you actually create a 2D character animation project for, for creature from this, from this, from this character, <laughs> you can actually turn off the, the lighting, which means that you actually want to light it in real time in 3D. I'll get into that in a moment, but what this means is when you do export, you have two options. You can either export it with the pre-baked lighting, if you want, but if you're actually going to light it in real time in your game engine, when you export it, you should turn off the lighting. So uncheck active, so you don't see the lighting, and I'll show you in a moment how we're going to turn it back on, but it will be actually be rendered in real time, so you can alter the lights around. Very cool, right? And light it from whatever angle you want, which is what you want actually in a game engine where you have 3D, real-time 3D lighting. Okay, but for now, let's turn it on for e easy visualization. Now, there's a couple of knobs here. You can, you know, tweak, change the lighting angles and whatnot. This is for testing, obviously. Again, for pre-visualization, you can change the, um, you can change the specular color. So, <laughs> you can change it to some weird color if you want. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to go into this too much, but you get the idea. Now, before we go into other options, the more important options you probably care about, are the camera type. So there's the perspective camera. You can change the view of view. Right now it's 45 degrees. You can change it to whatever you want. Or you can change it to orthographic, which in this case looks a bit weird. So you have to set the correct orthographic projection values for the camera. And I encourage you to actually read up on how orthographic projections work. So in this case, look, I just tweaked the left and right orthographic projection parameters of the orthographic camera and you can see now it looks correct. Now orthographic projection allows you to create sort of isometric looking characters. So if that's what you're going for, like a full-on isometric game like so, then you would probably want an orthographic projection. Now if you're doing regular, in fact for most cases if you don't care about special projections, you just want to go back to perspective which is what I recommend is actually easier. In most cases, it should work. Then you can just deal with a perspective camera. Whatever camera you pick, when you export, it will be exported in that type, right? So if you care about orthographic, then do orthographic. If you care about perspective, then do perspective. Very simple. But just take note that it will export in whatever camera view it is in. OK, but let's get to the more important details of how to actually use this tool. Okay, so let's start actually defining and painting the regions for this character. So switch to edit. So in edit mode, this is where you actually define the different mesh regions of creature when you actually create this character. So the way you do it is you click your mouse on the add region and let's give it, let's try two regions. So I have a head region and I am going to have say a torso region just for as an example. So I go into head and what I do is just simply move my mouse over and start dragging and painting the exact triangles that I want to be associated with this region. Now, this, I'm in precise mode, as you can tell, precise paint. So I can precisely paint which triangle I want to be associated with this region, as, which, as you can tell, is kind of slow. So if you don't want to be precise, <laughs> just uncheck precise, and now you have a radius to play with, and I can make the radius larger or smaller, and I can just come in and say, yeah, there you go, simply paint, and this is a lot faster. So now I'm in an unprecise mode, but you know, fast mode. So these are the triangles that are associated with the head, right? And then I go to torso. See, when I switch to torso, you see that immediately these triangles are not no longer paintable because I painted that for the head. So now I come in and similarly I paint for the torso. Very simple. It's not that hard, right? So I can come in and easily paint all these regions, right? Like so. This, this is again for the torso, 
right? And then I can come in and switch between regions. See that? And that's that's all it is. It's super simple. And you can of course delete regions and change the name and all, all the all the stuff you're used to for regular 3D painting is all available there. Now you're going to be asking this question, well, this is great, but what if I have a very complex mesh and I take a long time to paint and I want to save out these different editing sessions, these different region maps. Can you do that? Of course you can. So you go back to Pose, and if you move your mouse over, in Authoring, you can click on the Save button, and this will actually save your current authoring set. And you can, of course, open a, a previously created authoring set, and I have one for you right now. So let's, let's open that. That's called Dino 3 Set. And let's turn on the lighting. Let's go back to edit. As you can see, here I have the different painting regions all defined, right? So I have the upper head, lower head, torso, tail, the arm, and everything. So this is an example of a pre-painted or pre-authored region set, which I've done before. And this is very useful. As you can see, you can pass it out to team members if they want to continue the painting session, or you can use it for yourself if you want to continue a session because it's painting 3D meshes might be difficult in some cases or tedious or you just don't have time to do it so you can continue from the previous session so it's very useful so that's basically the authoring portion of the region painting now once you are happy with everything you have painted all the regions you're very happy and you're happy with the lighting make sure you pose your character exactly you, how you want to make sure the character actually occupies the entire screen <laughs> very important so once you're happy with that then we can go in and create our creature character so simply move your mouse over to create new creature project click on that and now you have a whole host of other options <laughs> The first option is the image resolution. So this is the resolution in which your character is going to be rendered out at. Okay, the source resolution. The higher resolution, the the more the more of your character you get because it's 3D, right? There's almost an infinite resolution. But take note, if you increase the image resolution, you also have to increase the atlas resolution. That is the actual atlas, the texture atlas that we're going to pack these regions into okay so these two have to be increased in tandem so you can play around with them to see what you get padding is again this is just basically padding of different regions so this these these are the number of pixels that the buffer you have between each region make sure you have an ample buffer 30 is a good number and then super sample which gives you very high quality it's a fancy feature which will increase the quality of your rendered out regions into 2D. So check that if you want to spend the processor cycles on that. Uncheck it if you don't care about it. Totally up to you. And when you're done, click Create, and that will pop up a box. I'll cancel right now. You click Create, and that will create a new project. And then we'll see how it looks like. So this is the created project from our Dino test. After we clicked Create, I use Super Sample with a base resolution of 1024 and a texture pack, pack resolution of 1024. You can see that Creature actually created all the different region meshes for us, and now it's back in 2D land, right? And again, the cool thing about this approach is you can see we, our meshes are in 2D. We can refine it how we want. We can down-res it, up-res it. We can even have a 3D mesh that's low resolution, but when brought into Creature, we can increase the resolution so we go the other way, and we get even more fidelity and more deformations. So, or you can go the other way, which is you have a high resolution 3D mesh, and you take the resolution down in 2D if you want to do cheap animations. So again, the possibilities are quite endless. It's very exciting, as you can tell. So these are the mesh regions, and if I go into rigging mode, you can see the character is here. So the way you do it is you click on Add Region, and you click Auto Place Regions from Project and then it's going to give you these options and you select a ratio. Now, play around with the ratio a bit. Don't worry if the ratio is wrong, you can just re-add it again and try again. I recommend a value from 0.8 to 1.1 to fit your character perfectly. And if those values are precise, you can still move the regions in place. But essentially, this will allow you to automatically infer and mostly place the regions in the right place with some manual adjustments after that. So once you've done that, the region will pop into place like here. And I have, as you can see, I have the rig all set up as well. And you can just go in and I assume you already know how to rig your characters properly in Creature. So this is a standard rig, rigging procedure in Creature, which you should watch other tutorials to learn how to do it. But then essentially what you're doing is you're just doing it as a regular 2D character. And you can see the weight maps are, again, set up for this character. So it's mostly automated, in fact. 
mostly automatic. Okay, so with this done, with this done, let's see how this dinosaur character was actually animated. So I have the default animation, which is kind of cool. But what's more exciting is the move animation. And I'll explain to you how it was done, and then we can get to it. So let's actually turn on lighting for this character. So, and then we'll see. So if I click on animate, and now I click on lighting and normal map preview. Now I will select the normal map texture. So this is where the magic happens. So click on that. And remember I mentioned before to you that Creature actually also converts the normal map of this character, of the 3D character, into 2D. So you can actually light up a 2D character as if it was in 3D. It's pretty cool, huh? And let's see how, how where the, that normal map is. So I created a new Creature project called Dino2 Test. So go in there and you'll see there's a there's a directory called data 3D conveniently located there. So double click on that and you can see there's a normal underscore map.png. So select that that guy and now enable lighting, click apply, and there you go. Magic. <laughs> and this is our 2D character light in 3D. As you can see, I can change the lighting and it looks perfectly 3D, which I think is very exciting, to be honest. <laughs> I can also add the specular color back into Frey. So again, apply, and now I get specular lighting with my 2D character. Isn't that incredible? So this is a 2D character animated in 2D, but lighted up in 3D with normal, normal, normal lighting, normal map lighting, sorry. Okay. So that's, that's exciting. Let's see how this animation was created. Let's just cover some basics. I assume you know mostly about the very powerful creature procedural animation system, but I'll just briefly go through the basics. If you open up the animation rig graph, it's very easy to tell what's going on. So there are a couple of bend physics motors going on. You can see it's going on for the tail and the hands and the neck, right? And then I have IK rotate motors for the legs so that gives it the automated walking behavior right that's that's pretty cool and i have the move bounce motor that is for this guy over here so it gives it sort of a bouncing gate motion so it drives all the physics right and i have rotate cycle motors for the head and also the feet just to give it a bit more walking action just a bit that add a touch. Okay, but this isn't the only magic that's going on right now. As you can see, what's really exciting is the flesh is also wobbling around uh, about in a very realistic way, in a, like basically a soft body fashion. When that's because we're using soft body physics, right? So I actually have a mesh physics soft body motor on it, and it, as you can see, I painted out the regions on the mesh that are glued together. There, there are directly sticky to animation. I've left, left the rest of the regions dangling to move with the 2D dynamics. And that's actually how you get the very dynamic, look at that, very dynamic soft body motion, very fluid motion, very visceral motion of flesh. That's actually how you do realistic flesh. And I have it also going on for the feet as well. So you can see the muscles and the skin sliding on top of this character. And I believe for the, there you go, the tail as well, right? So, and of course, of course I've uh, set, you know, tweaked a couple settings. So I've turned off gravity for these guys. I don't care about gravity. And I've tweaked the stiffness and damping. But anyway, so the overall effect of this character is actually a rather realistic walking dinosaur that is animated in 2D. It's a pure 2D character but it's lighted up in 3D. And to prove to you it's actually lighted up in 3D, let's go to the post-process effect. This is actually where you can export stuff out. And I'm gonna turn on 3D lighting for this guy. So I'm gonna select the normal map, and I, there you go. So now let's play this animation in the post-process mode, right? So here we go, and I can hold on Alt, and then right drag, and you can see What's really, really exciting is the lighting actually lights the character up in 3D space. I mean, this is basically 3D lighting. The character looks perfectly 3D, but I want to remind you again, this is a full-on 2D character. <laughs> there is no 3D elements in this character. So again, think of the possibilities you can use this feature for. You can blend this 2D 
pseudo 2D slash 2.5D, 3D, whatever you want to call it, character in a 3D environment, as long as it doesn't turn too much, right? The camera doesn't pan too much. You can mix this along with your actual 3D characters. So this character is a lot cheaper, first of all, to render, to compute, because you can tweak the number of vertices in 2D. And you can mix it with a full-on main 3D character that does turning and does all the fancy stuff you require in 3D. So you can throw a lot of these guys onto on screen to do all the, all the different gameplay operations you want. It's great for crowds, it's great for backgrounds, it's great even great for NPCs. It might even be good for main characters or cutscenes where you don't want to spend the budget of a full-on 3D mesh. So the possibilities are very exciting and I hope you really enjoy this feature. This feature is, I think, quite powerful and takes the creature animation tool to the next level. So, and I hope, again, you enjoy this feature. There's going to be a lot more, even more exciting features coming on to the creature animation tool moving forwards. So thanks for watching and happy animating.